Son, I need to tell you something. Yes, Mama. I was on the streetcar the other day, and the behavior of the men on the streetcar was appalling. It started out well enough, just like normal. A young lady entered the car, and the men were all gentlemen. But then, a mature lady like myself entered the car. Those uncouth specimens hid behind their Walla Walla Gazette. I know no son of mine would ever act like that. No, Mama. Today's newspaper is June 15, 1895. Colonel F.J. Parker left for Spokane Wednesday morning. Miss Stella Levy of Union, Oregon is the guest of Miss Julius A. Levy. G.W. Hunt, the railroad contractor, spent a few days in his old home this week. The annual picnic on Pike's Peak of the senior class of Whitman College was held Thursday and proved a most enjoyable outing. Eight carriages carrying 25 picnickers left the city early in the morning and were soon climbing the beautiful Lewis Mountains. Owing to a light wind, the air was hazy and a good view of the valley could not be obtained. Target shooting, gathering flowers, and a bountiful lunch at noon made a pleasant day pass rapidly. All of the graduating class were among the party, with the exception of Miss Edwards, who was compelled to leave for her home Thursday morning. A man named Frank Peoples, who is wanted in Spokane for grand larceny, was recognized on the street Wednesday by a commercial traveler who informed the officers of the man's identity. Peoples was placed under arrest and Sheriff Rainier notified. He came down from Spokane Thursday and took the prisoner back for trial. The fire department are taking steps to erect a monument over the grave of the veteran fire dog, Sport who was run over last week by the hose wagon while endeavoring to clear the street of some fellow canines. The design selected is that of a broken tree or stump resting on which will be the statue of the dog. The inspiration will read, Sport, veteran fire dog, killed June 4, 1893, while in line of duty. About $10 has already been subscribed to the fund. Grand Celebration at Thayer's Mill on the Tushi, July 4, 1895. Music and dancing, speeches and music. Balloon ascension and parachute jump by the Brady Brothers. These noted acrobats and aeronauts will ascend clear above the Tushi Canyon 2,000 feet before jumping from their airship. Everybody should go. A dose of tar and feathers. Not since the days of the vigilantes have the citizens of Walla Walla vented their indignation in mob violence till last Saturday night when a masked body of about 20 men took Joseph Fossati and Robbie Allen, his black wife and former mistress, from their rooms on the alley between Main and Rose Streets and applied a liberal coat of tar and feathers to them both. About midnight, a hack drove up to their door and with but little ceremony, the two were hustled inside and taken to the city limits near the O.R. and N. Depot and there, a generous coat of coal tar was applied to their bodies with a broom and a sack of feathers poured over them. 
The mob then as quietly dispersed as it formed, and the two were left to take care of themselves. A few evenings later, Fasadi went to Portland, where he has secured employment in a restaurant. The woman has been confined to her bed since the deed was committed, and informed a Gazette reporter that she intended to prosecute the guilty parties, as she claims to know who they are. However, the police state that she will soon be able to leave the city and has promised them to go. The cause of the denouement is well known. After living with Robbie Allen, who gives her true name as Dora Gans, and who has been the proprietor of a notorious dive in the city for several years, last Friday they went to Dayton and were married by Justice Holman. Some will go to Greece or Harvard, some to Norway or to Rome, some to Greenland's icy mountains, more perhaps will stay at home. Full-blooded English Mastiff puppies for sale, inquire or address D.M. Sloan. A.P. Pearson of Pearson Brothers was so unfortunate as to break his left leg last Sunday below the knee. He was in a buggy on his way to his ranch, and while crossing the Walla Walla on a bridge, some cattle scared the horse and threw him out. Dr. Blaylock set the broken limb. The Indians of the Umatillo Reservation have been officially notified that those who have selected lands in severality are no longer wards of the government. They are subject to the same laws that any citizen of the United States is governed by. Sport and Athletics Are the firemen going to give a picnic this year, or have they given up the idea? A small number of Walla Walla Bicycle Club members took a run out on the Pikes Peak Road Sunday. They report a fine trip, and the road's good. On the way, they stopped at John Davis's place and ate a few cherries. Cockfighting is carried on to a greater or less extent in and around Walla Walla. At least one main is in operation outside the city limits. While a contest of birds is occasionally witnessed not a thousand leagues from a certain place on Main Street. Artificial targets are now almost universally used by sportsmen instead of live pigeons for exhibitions of skill. Dr. Eberly says that the birds are becoming so scarce and their price so high that a substitute of some kind had to be secured. The clay pigeon is the result. What is a periwinkle? The Lord only knows and he won't tell. Periwinkles are, however, good for bait at almost any season of the year. They are usually found in quantities in shallow, rippling water clinging to the small rocks at the bottom of the stream. The novice at periwinkle hunting must look close, or he will not at first be able to distinguish the objects of his search. This diminutive shellfish is found in greatest abundance and highest perfection near Walla Walla. The nearer the mountains, the smaller they are. The periwinkle, in his native tenement, is covered with a yielding shell, to which very small pebbles adhere. It is to be removed from this covering before it is fit for bait. This explains why a periwinkle in the shell is not relished by the average trout, which knows by experience that a stomach full of this delicacy is liable to bring on acute indigestion, but not the gout. <music>